Oh, yeah. All right. So now it's 12 o'clock, uh, at least in my, uh, my time zone. Um, so the next speakers are uh, talking about co-creation of OER policies, and they will introduce uh, themselves. Uh, so the floor is yours. Yes. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to our session, co-creating OE policies, in which we will introduce um, some new ideas on how to increase democratic participation in educational policymaking, um, which I guess we all agree is uh, de desperately needed in, in these days. And um, it's actually about a publication and the uh, Lead authors of these guidelines we will present today um, have been Javier Atenas and Leo Havemann, um, which I had the pleasure to work with uh, during the last month um, within the um, OE Policy Hub and also within the OE Policy Lab. Um, as I already mentioned, um, Christina Stefanelli unfortunately uh, cannot be here to, today. Um, I'm Jan Neumann, the project manager of the OER World Map and the OE Policy Hub. And before I hand over to um, Javi and Leo, I would like to briefly mention um, and introducing the OE Policy Hub, um, a new platform which we just launched some weeks ago and which provides in many ways the background for the great piece of work uh, you will uh, hear about today. And um, yes, the mission of the Policy Hub is to foster evidence-based collaborative policymaking in the field of open education um, by providing data, good practices, and high-quality resources and bringing together experts, advocates, and organizations from all over the world. And um, the Hub especially provides a comprehensive collection of OE policy documents, um, but also additional functionalities like a collection of high-quality tools and resources, as well as a database for OE um, policy experts. Um, we, we hope that the OE Policy Hub will help to accelerate the evolution of OE policy making um, by pointing to both um, established and innovative thinking in this field and by fostering the necessary discussion on this highly relevant topic. And I'm convinced that the guidelines presented here today will provide a great starting point for this. And um, with this, I hand over to Javier and Leo. Thanks, Jan. Uh, so uh, I, I hope that you're seeing the acknowledgement slide now. Um, it was really important to us to acknowledge the um, fantastic um, and um, indispensable um, advice and guidance and support that we received from um, this wonderful group of people, some of whom um, are, are here at the session. So uh, it was really um, uh, fantastic to have um, this, um, this democratic participation in the process of producing um, our guidelines as well. So thank you all uh, very much for that. So the, uh, a bit of context to this um, is uh, that um, as, as I'm sure you all realized in UNESCO, UNESCO in 2019 um, published their recommendation on OER and this was really the culmination of um, a, a lot of work which began in, in 2002 with the, the um, forum on open courseware and the sort of coining of the term OER um, right through to the 2012 um, declaration, the 2017 um, action plan um, from Ljubljana and, um, and so, uh, so finally for, for UNESCO to actually uh, produce a recommendation um, is really the, the sort of highest level of um, policy guidance that UNESCO um, provide to member states. And, um, and in this, they're asking uh, that we build the capacity of stakeholders to create, access, reuse, adapt, and redistrib redistribute OER, um, that we develop supportive policy for OER, that we're encouraging inclusive and equitable quality OER, we're nurturing the creation of sustainability models and also that we're promoting and reinforcing international cooperation. And, um, and so uh, we, um, we, with the hub project, we've really been thinking about ways in which um, we can contribute to these goals and we can work with uh, various kinds of other uh, open education focused organizations um, who are all um, interested in, um, in collaborating around these projects. And, um, and one of the things that we in our kind of small group decided to do was to um, work on um, a series of guidelines around developing supportive policy. 
And um, uh, the, one of the first steps really in thinking about this was actually to consider what really what really is policy. Um, and um, it's a more more complicated question than it might at, at first appear. And um, and there were some some really interesting intervention. This is a, a, a topic that's quite close to my heart because it also relates um, closely to my um, current um, doctoral research project. And um, and so some uh, some sort of definitions of uh, open education policy that I've encountered had um, pointed out that um, that open education policies might be actually courses of action just as much as they might be written documents. So that in other words, it's not always something that's completely um, codified and often something that might even even if it is that you can't necessarily easily discover like it may not may not be available on an organization's website or for, but so so just because you can't actually see the evidence what I call the policy traces doesn't mean that the policy isn't in some other kind of way present um, so with that bearing that in mind and also bearing in mind that we um, we tend to take a quite an inclusive view of what open education means and by that we mean including open educational practices in a quite a wide sense as well as OER um, as one specific um, element within that wider landscape, then we came up with this definition, which I hope that um, I hope that you will find interesting and useful. And this, um, so what we've said is that open education policies are written or unwritten guidelines, regulations, and strategies which seek to foster the development and implementation of open educational practices, including the creation and use of open educational resources. Through such policies. Governments, institutions, and other organizations allocate resources and orchestrate activities in order to increase access to educational opportunity, as well as promote educational quality, efficiency, and innovation. So that's what we are um, focused on um, in our guidelines. Um, although, obviously, when although we recognize the existence of unwritten guidelines, we are um, also seeing that the sense in which policy can be unwritten and perhaps then more malleable as an opportunity to work towards getting um, more concrete uh, guidelines through this process of co-creating. Sorry, more concrete policy, I mean. So, um, so also we need to think about, um, you know, in what sort of form does open education policy come to us? And, um, and for this, we drew on some um, descriptions of um, different forms of policy from the um, European Commission's uh, Joint Research Centre. Um, and they, they identified these four types, policies focusing specifically on opening up education through the promotion of OER and OEP, uh, policies relating to general ICT for learning with some OE component, comprehensive strategic educational policies with some OE component, and policies designed as part of national open government action plans with some OE component. And also through the uh, work of the Policy Hub, we identified two additional uh, categories here, um, openness policies within OE, OER components. So in other words, openness and wider senses of open access, open science and um, open, you know, other kinds of opening activities that recognize an open education angle um, and uh, also labor market policies within OE or OER component. So why this focus from our point of view on co-creating open education policies? Um, it, we felt OE policies should be designed in an open, transparent and participatory way to ensure that those who will be affected by the policy can participate and be involved in the decision-making process. So in other words, this is a, this is a um, open education is a democratizing movement and therefore we should be thinking about creating uh, policy through a democratic process as well. So the aim of this guide is to provide advice on how to co-create policies using a participatory approach, which um, really requires to have a multi-stakeholder co-creation forum, including representatives of key stakeholder groups. And, and this really must include those who might usually be marginalized or traditionally underrepresented underrepresent, under in policy making. And now um, I will hand over to Javier for the next slides. Well, thank you so much for, for being here. Uh, this has been a very interesting process uh, and, and work with, with, with the colleagues of the team and everyone that participated. Um, when we started thinking about how we can effectively contribute to open education policy making, um, in a way or another, I have been working for quite a while with open government and open data. 
So, and, and one of the approaches of open government is to have these very uh, open round tables where the civil society, the academia, and members of the public in general can participate in to co-create a national commitment. So they create, they propose ideas for uh, commitments, so national commitments, and then some of these ideas are selected. And then after a process of co-creation that kind of affords every single step for um, the um, uh, the policy cycle in general, so in, in a way of another, it's a modified issue of, of, or element of, of the policy cycle, uh, you get to a consolidated uh, narrative requesting that your country will aim to produce something or to do something in within a time, uh, time frame. So what we thought about is, okay, what if we bring this open government methodology that is actually been tested and it's been quite effective for I don't know, it's a, over 120 countries in the world um, to see whether we can co-create open education policies. We've seen that there are already some open education commitments in within the open government partnership, um, national commitments and the national action plans. So we thought maybe if we worked around this idea and we propose a clear guidelines on how not only countries, but also academia, so universities um, can develop and co-create open education policies that will provide a um, higher sense of co-ownership. One, one of the issues why policy tend to fail mostly in, in higher education is because they are designed as, as a bit of a mandate with consequences, um, uh, but there is very little rewarding around them. And you don't feel that it's something that you need to achieve or to comply with sometimes because you basically got another mandate. In the case of open education, as it can broaden up uh, and access to high quality resources, and it needs to be concomitant with open access and with open science proposals within universities and also with open with governments, uh, we want to get people involved into feeling that they own part of the policy, though might lead to, may lead, we, we need to uh, further validate uh, our idea, but I, I, we think it's, it's quite possible. Um, that the policy succeeds. So uh, um, to create or to develop a culture of openness, it, it, it's very important first to start harmonizing different elements, for example, in, in, in open education. So you need to make sure that if your unit comes with an open education policy, you have involved the people from the library, for example, because there are national institutional policy regulations uh, that may derail uh, your open education policy if you were if it wasn't worked um, with them. Um, it's uh, if you can go back one please Leo. Um, one of the things that we've noticed is when uh, the libraries have policies or the institutions have policies so they only allow open access publication but they never mention open education within the open access policies it's quite hard to get uh, people to publish open educational resources because it's not included. So the language is kind of different. So this is what we think, like for example, the first element of co-creating what we call the co-creation forum is to have people from uh, copyright in doing institution or from the government to make sure that uh, the, uh, the policy won't face this first, uh, first obstacle. If you, you can move, please. Also, we, we need to uh, think about open education policies to be inclusive, inclusive in every single sense. So uh, from having a clear scope on helping students with, with learning um, and, and persons with, with learning disabilities and with disabilities in general, um, they need to be inclusive in kinds of gender and uh, race, um, in, in, in every single uh, possible way. Um, and also needs to support innovation, teaching and learning. So experiment and reduce and adapt and take other methodologies and, and, and include them in their own cultural context. I think culture, it's really important here. So when we're looking in general, what we think about um, key elements of open education policies, it's of course, copyright, inclusive access, uh, including inclusive and excessive uh, learning design, policy coherence. So. Uh, the governance policy, it's in coherence with the open access, with the open science, with the open data policies in within a landscape or an environment. So it can be government or it can be institutions. 
need to look into uh, learning accreditation and create transfer uh, pedagogic innovation, diverse access to knowledge. So and we've seen like the diversity, it's, it changes with the time. So when, you, with, when we thought about two years ago and what was inclusive access to learning, it changed with the pandemic. Now we need to produce materials much quicker that cater uh, for different realities and different levels of bandwidth, for example. So they also need to think about, uh, like the policies need to include elements of capacity building, uh, rewarding open educational practices to promote an open culture, direct resources and funding to open education initiatives. Um, and also we think that needs to be sustainable by like open infrastructures. They have a, gov a data governance and privacy model. So we can do lots of open education, but if your university or your, your institution has uh, use of platforms that are proprietary and that just gather data and don't respect the privacy of the students and of the academics, uh, then uh, you ne we need to find sustainable models in, in, in a way that the data collected is done in a very ethical way, in the way, for example, that Athabasca does. Um, so it, it's a bigger environment. We want to in a way of another move beyond the classic OER policies and start developing open educational policies that are comprehensive towards different elements. So Leo, please. So we think it, uh, and, and what, what we propose is to develop a um, inclusive and participatory arena for uh, different people and different stakeholders to participate in the whole stages and discussions and consultations to ensure that the sense of co-ownership and co-responsibility. Um, we think uh, that to uh, develop a proper um, co-creation element, you have to have a series of principles. You have to have a forum where people come and sit together. It can be a virtual or physical forum. You have to have transparent channels of information and dissemination of information so everyone can access the uh, whatever kind of information you're producing and can discuss online. You have to have a platforms for dialogue and for co-creation so you can have little groups and people that work together and then you have to have a policy co-creation process from uh, the policy implementation to the policy revision so across the whole cycle of policy. Um, Leo please. So uh, th there is an, an important thing governments as mostly signatories of the open government partnership need to also uh, compromise when they adopt the OER, the open education recommendations from UNESCO to foster co-creation spaces and policies for uh, open education in general. Um, policy need to be supportive of enabling open education practices and recognize the value for those that will be affected by the policy directly. So it's, it's not to have a policy recipient, but also having a participatory approach to educational policies. And this is something that we aim to propose to governments that are both signatories of the OER recommendations from UNESCO and are members of the open, uh, the open government partnership. So be transversal, be democratic in the way that you foster these kinds of discussions. Uh, Leo? Uh, okay, so there's your open free copy. Um, <laughs> you can download it and we, we are happy to, to get questions and to keep discussing online and offline. Um, I don't know, that, that's for me. So I'm really happy and um, hopefully in a couple of years we will have a, a second edition and to start adding good practices. Yes, we'll post it link in the chat right now. Off you go. So yeah, this is your copy. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. Uh, very interesting work. And I think it's very useful for a lot of people. Uh, I saw a lot of uh, plus ones uh, on uh, the fantastic work uh, you've been doing. Uh, we know it's complex, so uh, it, it's really good that you have done this and, 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 and perfect timing to launch it here. Um, so um, I haven't seen any specific questions um and um but we also almost out of time so uh we can stop the recording